morning. Thank you for, uh, to the uh, KCA and the committee for giving me this chance to discuss this burning topic. Um, admittedly, it's a topic with a limited amount of data, so I'll do my part for keeping us on time, of course, and uh, have a chance to show some CT scans and talk, you know, tell some anecdotes and see if we can actually answer any questions. I uh, don't have any disclo uh, disclosures to uh, give. Um, and just to clarify, at the, at the beginning here, that this is not a discussion of the role of lymphadenectomy for somebody who has bulky nodal disease in the absence of systemic or distant sites. Um, some people lump those together because those patients often have a very po uh, poor prognosis. But as was discussed yesterday, this, some of these patients do uh, do well with uh, lymphadenectomy. So we're not going to discuss them. We're going to discuss only patients with clinical node positive or negative disease in the setting of uh, distant sites of uh, metastasis. So first, Discussing the situation when you have what appears to be nodal involvement on uh, staging uh, imaging, so clinical node positive disease. Um, there is some data, of course. Uh, the group at UCLA showed about a decade ago that patients who underwent lymphadenectomy uh, in the setting of metastatic disease do better than patients who do not have um, uh, lymph node dissection at the time of uh, nephrectomy. Now, this was retrospective, but nevertheless, there was a substantial um, uh, survival benefit, and even on multivariate analysis, they consistently found that lymph node dissection did offer a survival advantage. Um, other reasons to do a uh, lymph node dissection besides a possible survival benefit, uh, well, it's fairly easy to do. The, the, the complication rate is low um, in the single digits, and it's definitely prognostic. Um, patients with nodal disease, true nodal involvement uh, in, with distant sites of disease do very poorly. Um, there's also some uh, thought that perhaps, perhaps patients with nodal involvement are not good, good candidates for immunotherapy in that uh, paper by uh, Pantuck, as well as by uh, Fitzsali uh, in a couple of years prior to that. Or, uh, they did not see a very good response of immunotherapy to patients who had uh, nodal involvement. Admittedly, the numbers were low. Um, but also something that maybe it doesn't show very often, but there is a possibility of progressive um, or morbidity from progressive adenopathy of a couple of CT scans. Admittedly, these are relatively unusual situations, but they do come up. If you look here, this is a CT scan of a patient who had the primary tumor in place, has bulky adenopathy here in the inner cable region, and a tumor thrombus. Uh, but if you look at a slightly different slice, you'll see the renal vein is clear. In fact, at the time of nephrectomy and um, cable thrombectomy and, and node dissection, all of the, or the, the, the thrombus was actually coming from the nodal disease, and that, I've seen that couple of times now. Um, the, uh, this is another patient we just saw very recently, a 30-year-old who had had a nephrectomy uh, at an outside institution about four or five months prior, was transferred to our institution with a bowel obstruction. And what we saw on uh, CT is that he had very large uh, nodal burden, essentially obstructing his duodenum. And he couldn't even receive any uh, um, oral therapy, so he had to actually go undergo a decompressive G-tube and a uh, feeding J-tube to allow the initiation of systemic therapy. And this is a patient who had undergone uh, the sort of node plucking that Dr. Margulis referred to yesterday. So he had a node dissection, which was actually negative, um, but it was just a hyalur dissection. So. But there are potentially reasons to not do a lymph node dissection, even when there is clinical node involvement. Um, and reasons for that, well, the, the data supporting the role of lymph node dissection is limited. Um, it was the study, uh, the UCLA study, was retrospective and probably subject to quite a bit of selection bias. Um, it, patients who did not undergo a lymph node dissection probably had higher burdens of systemic disease or perhaps poor performance status. And this is also uh, a report that came in the immunotherapy era. And again, now that we're more often than not using targeted agents, perhaps those, those uh, sites of disease, those nodal deposits do respond better to targeted therapy. Um, another reason is, well, it's easier to do an nephrectomy laparoscopically if you're not going to do a node dissection. You certainly can do it, but it's certainly a lot harder. It takes longer. Um, and as has been shown by Dr. Studer and others, a lot of those clinically positive nodes are actually negative. Perhaps, at least in the setting of localized disease, greater than 50% of those nodes are actually negative. Um, there is, of course, the risk of chylocystitis, um, greater blood loss potentially, and even something we often forget in this population, though, with, at least in my experience, seeing more and more young patients with RCC, you can uh, uh, cause anejaculation. 
did have a patient who was most bothered by this after an extensive uh, load, no dissection. Um, and of course, you have one uh, case of uh, recalcitrant cholecystitis, and you won't soon forget it, nor will the patient. Um, and I just want to show you some examples of some uh, what appear to be, these are all patients with uh, distant disease at the time of presentation. And they had what appeared to be node positive disease. Some of them are less impressive than others. Of course, here we have a nodal deposit. Here you have some um, uh, inner ear cable disease. This here you can see actually quite an enhancing node, which again was negative. And this one was I was most surprised by. It had fairly large uh, uh, clinically node positive disease, or you see here inner ear cavity, and even behind the uh, renal uh, hilum. And these are all negative. So again, you can't be fooled by imaging, um, thinking that of course it they have uh, nodal disease and potentially even necessitating an open approach to try to dig out some of those inner radial cable uh, deposits. So, um, but I also want to touch on maybe some of the stuff that was just discussed. There's, there's a reason to not do lymph node dissection or cytoreductive nephrectomy in these settings in the, when you have a node positive disease. As we've already mentioned, node positive patients uh, with metastatic diseases do have a very poor prognosis, the worst of the worst, you might say. And are they even benefiting from surgery of any sort? And that's, of course, debatable, as we just heard. Um, that report that was mentioned by um, uh, Dr. Bratislavsky uh, from MD Anderson, they looked at seven preoperative variables that could be identified, of course, you know, before surgery that would help guide you in selecting patients who are going to benefit or not from cytoreductive nephrectomy. And one of those uh, uh, variables was the presence of retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy. So, of course, I don't have an answer um, to whether that should exclude them, but certainly when you see a patient who has a metastatic renal cell with a primary in place and you see retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy, should at least kind of your antenna should go up thinking, well, this patient may have a poor prognosis and may, in fact, better be served with at least upfront systemic therapy. Um, again, that's debatable, but at least, and again, a lot of these patients often have sarcomatoid histology. It's been shown by in, in that Pantuck report that if you have nodal involvement at the time of nephrectomy, you have a three times higher likelihood of having sarcomatoid histology. And again, many of those patients don't benefit from surgery. Um, in the setting when you have clinical node negative disease, um, honestly, there's really no data in this, in this um, uh, space. I'm sure I can offer some opinions, though, here. Um, the role of lymphadenectomy in that setting, there really isn't any specific data, but if you're going to be doing a complete metastasectomy, it certainly behooves you to at least consider lymph node dissection. It would be a shame to go to that extent to render somebody disease-free and not remove their lymph nodes. The likelihood of nodal involvement, all comers, is greater than 25 percent in patients with metastatic renal cell. Whether that holds true with patients who have clinical node negative disease, it's hard to say, but certainly they have a higher rate than the, maybe the 3 to 6 percent we think of in patients with localized disease. And you know, I can think of a case where I did do a complete metastasectomy. The guy had a liver lesion, and I, I did a lymph node dissection, but of course, it was not as extensive as it needed to be. And about two years later, he was NED except for a lymph node behind the adrenal gland, and that's, I was kicking myself for that. So, but on a more philosophical note, if I may, um, by doing a lymph node dissection at the time of uh, an nephrectomy, you're there. I mean, it doesn't add that much uh, time to your surgery, and likelihood of complications is low. And I think, again, maybe not. Uh, currently, but in the coming years, as our agents are more effective and patients do live longer, individual sites of disease, I think, are going to be more important. If somebody lives for four, three, four, five years, that one spot, that node that you didn't remove that now becomes, you know, has an unresponsive clone, does become more important psychologically, if not physically, with potential symptoms. So, again, I think if you're um, going to be optimistic, and I think as a surgeon, you kind of have to be optimistic, that's why we're doing surgery half the time anyway, the... Uh, I think that cleaning out the nodes at the time of nephrectomy it certainly makes sense. Um, and then, if I may, just on a slightly unrelated note, I think it's lymph node involvement has been used as a, at least a reason to, to not use immunotherapy, or at least some evidence points in that direction. And I want to, having had two patients recently referred who actually had essentially complete responses to IL-2, I'm very optimistic at, on that at this time. And I want to point out a patient who was 66 year old who had clear cell, metastatic clear cell that developed, um, or her metastatic disease developed at about a year after surgery. Uh, and it was primarily nodal recurrence. She had an inner aortic cable lymph node. It kind of doesn't project real well, but trust me, it's, it's a real node. I didn't remove that lymph node. I did her uh, nephrectomy laparoscopically and took out her peri uh, cable nodes. I didn't do an inner aortic cable di dissection. And she also 
had uh, pulmonary hyalur disease in the nodes, and she did push for IL-2, and she got it, and she had essentially a complete response. So I don't think that, um, I think the limited evidence that suggests that it's not effective against nodal disease is probably partly selected. Um, so anyway, thank you for your attention, and uh, I don't know if anybody's heard about uh, the Phil Knight's promise to the OHSU Cancer Center of $500 million if it's matched by a similar amount in two years. So I will be uh, uh, out front collecting spare change <laughs> towards that effort. Um, just, uh, just to summarize, I'm sorry. Again, clinical node positive disease probably should do it. It's possibly therapeutic, definitely prognostic. Um, occasional complications, maybe you have to use a more invasive approach, but uh, these patients may not be benefiting from surgery at all, truly. Um, as far as clinical node negative, it's definitely prognostic, very questionably therapeutic. But of course, get home later if you do it. But let's, and we have to remember, time is money, but that is never more true than in the OR, where every minute is hundreds of dollars. So anyway, thank you.